Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The National Nuclear Regulator provided an update on ESCOM's bid for a long-term operation authorization to enable Kuburg to continue for another 20 years. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the outlook for the life extension following significant delays and rising safety concerns. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this LTO application? Well, back in 2010, uh, Eskim at the time decided that they were going to extend the life um, of, of the Kuburg facility, Africa's only nuclear power station, two reactors, uh, Unit 1 and Unit 2 pressure wa pressurized water reactors. And they've been they're approaching their 40 year uh, end of life. So back in 2010, that seemed to be a, a long time away, and they approved a 20 billion rand budget life extension. And since then, there have been one delay after the other manufacturing delays initially in France, then in China. Uh, eventually, the, the big item that needs to be replaced uh, is the steam, the steam generator. And there's six of those across uh, the two reactors. And uh, those eventually arrived, started to arrive from China and being re get prepared for uh, installation across the two, two units. Then there were problems with the containment building for the radioactive parts. That wasn't ready in time, so the, uh, the steam generator replacement program was delayed further. Uh, so we've just had, it's been a number of delays, but th basically it goes back to a decision that Eskom took in 2010. And now the nuclear regulator has to make sure that this is a, a safe uh, thing to do. So Eskom has had to prepare th that documentation and uh, it's put in a safety case, a long-term operation safety case. Um, and that, that process has been underway as well for a number of months now. And it's coming to a head because the uh, unit one reactor steam generators have now been replaced, uh, but its uh, operating life ends in July next year, and we are now entering a phase where Unit 2 will be taken down for its steam generator replacement. And there's a number of other items that also have to be um, uh, maintained and upgraded so that this long-term author operation authorization can be received from the NNR. ESCOM has also applied to separate the Unit 1 and 2 licenses. Yes, I think this wouldn't have been a major issue had there hadn't been so many delays. But because of all the delays now, um, it's cutting it really, really fine. And ESCOM, in its uh, initial LTO application, also wants there to be recognition that the Unit 2 came into operation in 1985, November 1985, whereas Unit 1 came into commercial operation in uh, 1984, July 21. So the, if the two, two dates uh, are not separated, it's a major issue because, uh, of, because mostly because of the delays, but, be, but, but what will happen is uh, on July 21st next year, Unit 1, which has had its, its steam generators replaced, um, will, ha will be going down for another 200 day uh, maintenance, which is also compulsory maintenance. And, it, and Unit 2, which may have come back uh, by then um, from its steam generator replacement program, there's no certainty there because if we look at the Unit 1 uh, replacement, it was supposed to take until about from December last year to June this year, and it only started getting synchronized to the grid in November or late November, so, and it's still ramping up now in December. So there's no guarantee that that's going to be done. But should it be done, Unit 2's license will, will not be separated and it will have to stop operating on that uh, July 21 date. So it's, we, we're really in a situation where there's going to be no seamless life extension of this Kuburg as was envisaged all those years back in 2010. What are the next steps and can these safety concerns be overcome? Well, the, ne the next step is really the, the decision of the NNR board as to whether they're going to separate the licenses. And that will take place in the end of January next year. As I say, if that decision is not made, then we're going to have a period where both reactors will probably be down in, in July. Um, then the, the next thing is to actually have a, 
a decision on the long-term LTO safety case by the NNR, and that's scheduled only to be made in July next year. So there'll, there'll be a period now, there's been a period of public comments, a number of comments have already received, lots of concern about safety and about the, uh, the radioactive material and what's going to happen with that. But uh, there's going to be public hearings now in February at uh, three different public hearings uh, in the Western Cape. So that's, those comments have to be received together with all the iterations of backwards and forwards between uh, ESKIM and the National Nuclear Regulator around its concerns. And also this is because the nuclear reactor is governed by international bodies and serious safety issues have been raised uh, by the International uh, Atomic Energy Body and they've ra they raised that it was eventually a redacted version of that report was put into the public domain after a prior request from the Democratic Alliance and there were serious issues raised around the containment building and uh, I think the next 200 day outage is very much about the containment building making sure that that's, there's no leakage from that but that will only happen after the LTO license had, has been approved. So a lot of issues around safety are being raised uh, and concerns being raised. Uh, we know that in the, the French plants, the French uh, nuclear reactors have had some of these cracks that they've had to deal with. These are the French designs. So there's, there's a number of issues, not just boxes to tick, but fundamental verification that needs to take place before the NNR can, can uh, give both the, the, the separation of the licenses because there's common systems, uh, seismic bearings for instance, common cables, so they have to be in a condition that the regulator can say yes they can operate safely for at least, well, I don't know how long, but at least until the next maintenance period, but potentially for another 20 years, so that's a big decision to be made, but there's a number of other verifications that have to be made before July, that the, before the July decision by the nuclear regulator. When could the two units at Kuburg be running simultaneously again? Well, that's a big question. If they don't get the LTO, then never again. <laughs> but I think uh, Eskim would be working on the assumption they will get this LTO. But uh, we know that for the whole of this year, we haven't had two uh, units operating simultaneously and there have been disruptions in prior years. And if we look forward to 2024, we know that Unit 1 is going to go down again um, for its 200-day maintenance, this compulsory maintenance is part of a 10-year cycle that I spoke about earlier. And so that will mean it will be out for from July onwards, even if it has its LTO for quite some time um, to do that. And we're not too sure whether Unit 2 will re really be back from its steam generator. So we'll definitely have a period up until July where only Unit 1 will be operating. And then maybe Unit 2 will be available as, as Unit 1 goes down again for that 200 day. So we, there's big potential if they don't separate the licenses that both will be off from July next year for a long time. But say they, they separate the license, then there'll be only Unit 2 available and then unit two will have to go through its mandatory 200 day major outage uh, similar to the one that we're talking about for unit one it's very confusing but basically we so we should only have one unit available again for most of next year and because unit two it will have to go down for its 200 day mind we will have 2025 also disrupted so it looks like for a long period, at least the next two years, we'll only have one unit of Kuberg available at, at any one time. Now we know the debilitating effect that that's had on load shedding. It adds one stage to load shedding every time load shedding is declared, and that's basically every day. And we know that that comes with huge economic costs. We're starting to see that now in the official figures around what it means when the South African Reserve Bank talks about what stage six means for the economy. It really lops a lot of percentage points off our GDP. So it's been very costly. And we also don't know eventually 
what the direct cost of this life extension is going to be because while it was set at 20 billion back in 2010, the cost is going to vary because of a number of contractor claims that have taken place. As you can imagine with all these delays, there's a lot of finger pointing between Eskim and the contractors around who's to blame and the contractors are looking to recoup that where it's Eskim is clearly at fault. And for instance, not having the containment building in, uh, done in time is clearly an Eskim issue. So there are going to be claims. We don't know what the final budget is, but it's not going to be 20 billion. Whether it's going to be double that, we also don't know, but it's going to depend on how these claims are managed. And eventually, I think Eskim will have to come clean on that. And then the rest of us, uh, as the Reserve Bank and the Treasury and everyone reports and the Economist do the figures, will then see the full cost of this uh, Kuberg life extension is not just the 20 billion plus, but it's also the economic costs associated with much more intense load shedding than would have been the case had they just run till the end of their natural life, which would be July next year. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.